so, all right, so here at um, Texas Chicken, we're gonna be getting some chicken to go. And uh, that's gonna be part of the eat tonight. Slot the cat, we head off. And uh, it looks like a really nice day outside, actually. But let's, uh, let's focus on the chicken today. No. 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 Oh. 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 Man, these Oh. 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 These chairs are no ass. Well, if anything, today what we're going to be getting, and the mic's really tilted, I'm not sure it's okay. I think it should be okay. I'm going to be getting um, the meal deal on four. So that includes. Um, hang on. Let's see if we can uh, turn the brightness a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Getting all these things. Is it inverted? Is it inverted? Or? It probably is. That's um, six pieces of chicken, eight hot wings, got large fries, mash, uh, coleslaw, and no drink. We're gonna go without the drinks now. And then, um, no, but we've got, we've got Anju at home. Anju? What, 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 what's Anju? <laughs> Anju is like an accompaniment with beer. Oh, okay. So we're gonna do Anju when we get back. So the whole variety. What, what is Anju? It's like when you have beer with like a food, it's like a company mode with beer. It's got anju. But is it is it food? Well, food is anju, right? Or is it is anju a drink? I think anju is having beer with food. Is that is like is like I'm not too sure. I do. Any of you guys know what an anju is? Please educate us because he doesn't know. <laughs> Alright, we've got are you filming already? stuff in here. So we've got our prize. We are now going to... <laughs> we're now going to KFC and we're going to get um, some more stuff from there. Can we get um, an eight pack of Wicked Wings and a large coleslaw, please? Um, no, that's it, thank you. So we, uh, we have the wife heading off into the distance, just kind of that way to uh, get our third batch of chicken, which is by a company called Sensational Chicken. I believe it's a bit of a franchise. Um, obviously not as well known as Texas or KFC, obviously. But um, they, they do pretty, pretty good chicken, especially if you don't feel like heading into town to get either K-Fry or out west or down south to get Texas. So we'll see how that works out. All right, we're getting the last of our uh, fried chicken bits for today. So that's going to be at um, a Korean fried chicken place called One and One Chicken. So we're going to head there now and uh, get the last bit before we feast for this evening. All right, so hey guys, welcome to uh, the mukbang. So we've got four different types of chicken from all over Auckland, and we're going to try each one. So first one we've got is Texas chicken. And we've got, of course, who else but the granddaddy of KFC. KFC. We've got, um, now this is a local brand, it's called Kebabs. Um, sensational chicken. So we've got one of these as well. And for something of an Asian variety, we've got what we call number one chicken, which is a kind of Korean fried chicken shop that's just around the border from us. So we're going to try all of this today and uh, we'll see which one um, we think tastes better. I and also, wait. Also, what's going to be uh, really cool today is that when we do this tasting, we're actually going to be talking about a, 
a topic doesn't really quite fit in. We're going to talk about intermittent fasting. So obviously, this is uh, my brother Daniel. Hello. He uh, he's uh, he does intermittent fasting, whereas for me, I don't don't like it. Um, well, I've done it before, but I find that um, other methods work, and so let's dig in. All right. So what are you going to go for? So um, let's let's start with um, let's go with the sensational chicken thing. All right. For you, thank you, thank you. All right, all right. So, from the appearance of it, chicken looks healthy, healthy enough. Sometimes you get bits and pieces of chickens falling off it, more like broken. Okay, we'll try it. Looks crispy, it's not soggy. This is a good start. And I'm just digging it straight away. What do you think? Now this ain't no KFC, right? So you don't get the lemon herb and spices, obviously. But what I always really like enjoyed about it is that it's um, salty enough. There's um, it's crispy enough, um, and um, not too greasy as well. So always start with good chicken, good fried chicken. It's not it's not too greasy. Got a bit of um, salad to make things a little bit healthier. So I think it's one spoon of coleslaw to one slice of chicken ratio. It's good. I like it. This is the first time you had it? Uh, you ever had it before? I thought I might have, but it was a long time ago. Because it was before you got your driver's license. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> But this about my driving though. I'm not this thing, I'm just stating time frame. Yeah. It's all facts. Fair enough. But he's a very safe driver and I do trust him. Because obviously mom and dad will be watching this and yes, I'm a very safe driver my part. <laughs> mm. Although I think I did teach you how to parallel park, right? You taught me. Oh. I perfected it. As oh. always. Oh. As always. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Mm, no, it's good. It's good. So we should start with the whole intermittent fasting thing now. What okay, so um, I started intermittent fasting about. Okay, okay, no, hang on, hang on. So not, not to cut you off, but um, mm. I think for people who aren't in the know, um, tell them a little bit about what intermittent fasting is and what's it for. Okay, so um, the first time, um, to be perfectly honest, this probably wasn't the first time me hearing about intermittent fasting. I probably heard it from other people. But it was one of those things where it was a big thing with, oh, you know, you're gonna go, you're gonna fasting or rather starving. And you know, the biggest thing for me was I was fearful of like, you feel talk about having breakfast, it kickstarts your metabolism. And um, I've heard of it before and I know it works for some people. But I was like, oh, this is not for me because I do enjoy my breakfast. But the one thing I realized is with work, um, where I used to be anyway, I, it, I just typically didn't have breakfast. Um, and as soon as I got a little bit peckish, I was like, oh, I'm hungry and I'll have something at work and normally it wasn't very healthy. Um, so I was listening to a podcast, well, an interview, a podcast by Ed Milet and um, Dr. Ian Smith. And he was talking about clean eating and intermittent fasting. Now, this is probably not the cleanest, but I think um, he did talk about sustainability. If, he's, if you're not able to sustain something, don't do it. Um, so what intermittent fasting is, there's a period of time throughout your day where you eat and there's a period of time where you don't. So you have the fasting state and the feeding state. Um, in regards to um, um, Dr. Ian Smith, he talked about, you know, give, start with 12 hours of just intermittent fasting, which if you think about seven hours to seven hours is actually quite easy. Um, basically, if you have tea or dinner, sorry, before seven o'clock at night and don't eat till seven o'clock the next day, you've basically done a 12 hour fast. Um, which is what I, appealed to me because I thought, well, actually, one thing I I thought about intermittent fasting was I wanted to do it um, for weight loss. Um, the initial thoughts were partly aesthetic, but it's also one of those things where I come um, to decide that actually it is better for my health. Being overweight is never good. And um, yeah, mm. yeah, that's where I started. Mm. All right. And... Um how long would you say you've been um, intermittent fasting for? 
So, um, I've been intermittent, intermittent fasting from um, since about October 2019, so about five months so far. Um, it has it is relatively consistent. I use the term relatively because over Christmas time we went home down to mum and dad's and we had you know we had breakfast and and um, and you know we might have a dessert after because why would you say no to Christmas cake? And of course we had Chinese New Year as well, so major mission fasting was affected there. Um, so all in all, about five months. Yeah. All right. All right. And um, so since October last year till like now, um, what would you say um, is probably like the biggest thing, the biggest changes you've seen so far? Um, well, I think to elaborate on that, um, in regards to change will be weight, mm -hmm. number one. I started off at 97 kilos um, to begin with and I'm currently at 88.2 kilos. Nice. I'm using the scale at the gym, Snap Fitness Timaru, shout out. Um, it's a bit of consistent measurement in regards to my weight. I've also gone to get a body scan, although my first body scan was in January this year. So my next body scan is in April, so it'll be interesting to see what body composition has changed. Um, in regards to weight, even since January 2020, um, I was 92 kilos at the time in my last um, measurement in regards to weight the only thing I was just measurement in regards to weight was 88 and that was last week mm. so um, and with regards to intermittent fasting oh. that's the biggest biggest change um, probably the second biggest change will be it's not one that's necessarily physical but the biggest change for me is the mental or the emotional component of food mm. I think I, I'm a very emotional eater yeah. if I get down or if I or if I feel happy I eat if I feel down I eat if I'm stressed I eat yeah. if I'm not stressed I eat so yeah. it becomes a big thing where you're always thinking about food mm. Mm. and so with intermittent fasting it is interesting because it changed my mindset in regards to how I'm eating so if it's say um, I'm going oh man I'm going to miss lunch today because I'm busy at work rather than going oh man I'm going to miss lunch I'm hungry and feel emotionally affected by it, I go, actually, I'm, I'm fasting for 16 hours now. Let's see if we can hit 20. It becomes more of a challenge, and emotionally, I'm, I'm less stressed in regards to the fact that I'm hungry. I just go, oh, well, I'll just eat in another hour. I'll just eat in another hour. And actually, overall, it works quite well for me. Mm. All right. So before we continue on this really fascinating discussion, um, let's try another chicken. Mm. Which one would you like to go for? Should we go for Texas? Yeah, let's do Texas. So I believe, whoa, these are big. Uh, one of these? Oh, yes, please. All right. And uh, you know, sometimes with these really fried bits of chicken, you don't quite know what, which bits they are. It's, you know, you gotta kind of get under all the layers of uh, batter and whatnot, and then you'll figure out what you're eating. Uh, so this looks like, uh, I have no idea what this is, actually, to be honest. Um, it's meat if anything, so that's a good start. Um, good coating, nice thick coating. Mm. Um, my, my main complaint about Texas has always been that um, the, the flavor, the, the batter's good, right? So it's nice, crispy, but the chicken's always a little bit dry and tasteless. It's a little bit bland. Anyway, we'll see how we go. Mm. Mm. Well, it's just a spicy original. I think we got spicy. Right. So this is the spicy chicken. I have mm. a feeling there's a thigh. And um, all I've eaten so far, after a big chunk out of that bit, was just batter. So, <laughs> a lot of battering. So a bit of a generous batter, but um, I like not too bad. I do like the spice though. I think it adds a bit more flavor to the, to the meat itself. Mm. Good crispy better. Mm. Now you know, I think I think what's interesting about like IF, right? So mm. getting back to the whole IF topic again. I think when we talk about IF and we talk about like you know intermittent fasting, I think obviously we've all been brought up to think that you know, oh, 
breakfast is the most important meal of the day, so everyone has breakfast anyway. Um, and for you to not have breakfast or just skip breakfast, and I mean, what's interesting, right? Mm -hmm. So when I when I used to do IF, it was like, um, probably even about, I see even eight years ago now. So you know, I wake up in the morning. Sometimes I'm not too hungry, and I'll go, oh, you know, I'll, I'll just wait till lunch before I eat something, and um. So indirectly, I was actually doing IF at the same time as well. Mm -hmm. right. um, it worked out okay. Like you know, you'll you'll skip breakfast, you'll have lunch, and then you'll have dinner. That's right. Yeah. And I think for a while, and, and again, you know, like to, to start off with that statement I said in the beginning about not liking IF. That's actually not true. I actually did IF for quite a while. Um, and um, I think I I don't really see results because I wasn't acting. I wasn't wanting any particular results in general. It was just, you know, it was just convenient for me, right? Just to skip a meal, have lunch, and then have dinner. Obviously, because you're reducing your caloric intake for the day, you're not eating as much calories as you normally would. So, um, start to lose a bit of weight. Um, but I think what's really interesting, like, you know, you're saying you're, you're, you're wanting to do it for, I mean, there's an aesthetic reason for doing it, right? So you have weight loss, obviously fat loss, a um, bit more muscle gain. Um, mm -hmm. I think um, so. For me right now, um, I'm not. I'm no longer doing IF. I eat as and when I choose. But then, then again, um, I'm on some medication that requires me to have medication with food, so I can't always skip it. You know, um, so I need to eat before I take the medication. Yeah. So hence, for me, IF doesn't really work out very well anymore. So I tend to go with a more, and I want to say bodybuilder, but that's actually not quite true. I do eat about four, five, maybe even six meals spread out throughout the day. And I find actually that that helps, keeps my appetite better. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not as hungry, I'm, I'm more mm. settled. And, you know, um, I start off at about 92 kilos, I'm now down to 86. Mm. So, not too bad, but obviously, as you can see, these are two very, very different um, methods of, you know, weight loss, two very different methods of eating. And um, yeah, you know, um, no no one method is better than the other. Mm. I think in, in the same vein is that it has to be sustainable. Mm. I think a lot of people jump on diets, which, which I think diets are great, you know. Um, lots of diets that come down on, you know, caloric, in, caloric intake or just changing your lifestyle. But the key thing is that it has to change your lifestyle. I think diets are great, but how at the time people lose all the weight over a period of time and they'll gain it back. Because they go back to their old, you know, ways of eating and their old ways of managing how their meals are. Yeah, I'm that. And uh, I think it has, it has to work for you. So if someone who's like, oh, I'm quite keen to give intermittent fasting, I said, hey, give it a go. Let's start with 10 hours, not even 12. You know, you've got 24 hours a day. You have 14 hour feeding window. You have a 10 hour fasting window. If you sleep for eight hours, you've already done half the work. <laughs> well, three. How many is that? <laughs> How many is ten? <laughs> you done eight hours. You done four fifths of the work, <laughs> which is true. And I think, but this way, like you know, again, Daniel, just to clarify the whole. So with IF, we look at these two things called um, feasting windows and fasting windows, right? So fasting windows, obviously, these are periods of time that you you are not eating, and you're fasting, right? So. Say for example, you finish dinner at let's say seven o'clock, and you'll wait till um, seven o'clock the next morning before you start with uh, you know scrambled eggs or bacon or whatever, right? Yeah. So you have breakfast as per normal. So that's a twelve-hour um, fasting window. Um, so I think what I've heard Daniel anyway is that um, a lot of times people talk about the sixteen-eight. So there's a sixteen-hour fasting window and then um, an eight-hour feasting window. Yeah. And it is it is. Uh, or, you know, I, I probably want to use the word feasting, I'll use the word feeding because feasting yeah. means that, you know, you're gonna eat, eat all this, you want. all yeah. of this in an eight hour period. No, it, it's not. So you're eating as per normal, right? Mm -hmm. yep. You don't actually change the style of eating, you don't eat more or less calories, you just eat as per usual within that um, feeding, feeding window. window. So if you do 16 8, so that means you might do, you know, um, 8, 8 o'clock the night before till 12 o'clock the following day, and then you'll eat from 12 o'clock noon until eight o'clock that evening. So that's an eight hour feeding window. Um, what's, uh, I mean, that's said and done. What do you, I mean, obviously some people can go with three meals, some people do two meals. <clears throat> I know a person who does like just the one meal a day and for them that's more than enough. As long as they eat it within that window, they're fine. Um, especially for people you know, starting um, intermittent fasting, what would you recommend? 
I think, you know, um, it, it comes down to why you're trying intermittent fasting. Are you doing for, mm. you know, a- aesthetic purposes? If you're, you know, if, if it's aesthetic, are you a relatively lean person? Um, versus if you're, you know, quite heavy and you're doing strength training as well because you want to try and gain muscle mass. It's very, it, it gets a lot more complicated than that because you start to consider, are you exercising during your feeding window or your fasting window? Because you may not necessarily have the energy for it. And you actually require energy when you're exercising. Um, but more often than not, for me, because I had excess amount of fat, and I, you know, the, the typical, the body's basic um, um, ideal metabolic source is actually glucose. Your brain needs glucose. Um, but that, that's my opinion, um, and from what I understand of how the body's preferred source of fuel is glucose. Uh, it prefers it over protein. It prefers, prefers it over fat. Um, so for me, I, in regards to the contents I was eating every day, I didn't just have glucose. I also had a large amount of glucose stores. So your body basically takes it and it goes, what do we do with this excess calories? Let's store it away for next winter because our physiology hasn't changed that much since basically the early days. Um, so in regards to, you know, um, the, the, the exercising to consider that as well because one of the things I was trying to do was I was trying to build enough strength um, and in regards to the aesthetics was one part of it but the one thing I was comp- partly competing with was uh, one of the trainers I work, I work out with um, uh, Logan he's, he's, he's about 82 kilos if I'm not mistaken and he's squatting about 240, ki- uh, 240 kgs wow. 210 kgs sorry and, and, um, and deadlifting about 240 and I was, you know, I'm hitting 150 kg squat and 160 kg deadlift, and I'm like, man, I want to try and get to his, get to his level. And of course, when I was doing that, I was 92. And suddenly, when you start losing weight with intermittent fasting, you start finding that, you know, that that your your strength slowly starts to kind of feel like you get a little bit weaker with it because you got to consider you don't just burn fat; you also burn a little bit of lean muscle mass. You you tend to lose. A little bit as well um, overall because you're actually losing overall and of course for me is losing the excess storage of fat and, and um, glucose stores also means it depletes a little bit of my extra energy that I normally have and of course with counterbalance so if you're a 50 kg wo- uh, woman lifting a 50 kg weight is heavy but if I'm a 100 kg man lifting a 50 kg weight isn't as hard it's, it's a kind of like a counter mm. counterweight yeah, yeah, because yeah. your own body's your own counterweight mm. And so when you, I started losing, you know, it's one of those things where I started lifting, I started squatting 120 and I was like, man, this is heavy. Um, and I was like, man, a couple months ago I was doing 140, but I was starting to lose weight as well. Mm, mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Right. Um, what next? we had checked this. Um, what do you want next? Do you want KFC or do you want the number one chicken? Let's try the number one chicken because I think KFC is a pretty ba- basic taste that we're familiar with. Just in the past and we're just calling it out there KFC is basic but honestly <laughs> it's not, not basic <laughs> not that basic is bad but basic you know it's just awesome it's it's the OG we've had KFC ever since we were kids so yeah. we know the flavor pretty well okay. alright so let's try um, number one chicken let's give so, it a go so we've got these two varieties of it this is seasoned seasoned chicken and we've got um, crispy chicken on each side mm. alright so um, and they're both boneless by the way which is really handy yeah um, just go in my hands because we eat this. Mm, so it smells sweet. There's some um, sesame seeds on this one. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm gonna dig it. Yep. Mm. Oh, yeah. mm. 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 So what's nice about Korean um, fried chicken? You may even call that the OG KFC, huh? Um, so they give you this, um, these radish bits, pickle radish anyway. It's meant to cut the sweetness or the oiliness of the chicken. So, actually, that's really nice. Uh, Just like a palate cap cleanser. Mm. I'm not 
sure if I prefer. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna say that I actually like the crispy one better mm. Mm. than the than I the sweet than the sweet one. I think they're both really good. I think. Yeah, uh, it's interesting because those of us who've grown up in Malaysia mm. or probably Southeast Asia, at least we we had this thing called mami noodles, which is like a snack noodle that's. I'm pretty sure it's deep fried, isn't it? It's a fried noodle. It's an instant ramen noodle, yeah. It's an instant, like, thing, but it comes in a little packet like this size. Yeah. And the one thing I have to say, it reminds me of that crispy chicken. It kind of feels as though you've crunched it all down, turned it into powder, and that's your batter. Which is oh. quite nice. It kind of re- reminds me of, like, when we were little. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I've not thought about that flavor in ages. Mm. <clears throat> but it's nice though. Yeah, it's good, mm. thank you. Yeah, I'm definitely having more. This is really good. I'm enjoying this one. So well done, number one chicken. I might uh, seek a second opinion on this one. Um, it feels as though they've made it a chicken breast though. Mm. I think it is made of chicken breast. But it's a bit odd though, right? Because like, suppose your chicken breast is the one that dries out faster, mm. dries out more compared to a chicken thigh. Mm. I mean, it could be chicken thigh, who knows? But. This kind of cubage, you know what you get from just the size of that piece alone. I'm like, and I mean, maybe batter aside. I think this is, this got me at least chicken breast. Mm. Well, the one thing I think though <coughs> is that how they've cooked it, you can see there's quite a little, quite a lot of batter around it as well. But the batter is really tasty. Um, it's not overly salty. It's quite mild compared to like the Texas chicken. I kind of felt mm. the Texas chicken had a lot of flavor, but kind of you know wakes up your taste buds. But this one, a lot more subtle, um, very crunchy. And I think it's probably coated with tapioca flour, um, just in regards to how it crisps yeah. up. Or like rice flour. Yeah, yeah, or rice flour compared to or a potato starch of that sort, rather than just simple flour. Then mm. it's still very moist. Mm, yeah. Mm. Mm. Which is key to good fried chicken. It needs to be moist. Mm. <clears throat> Alright, so uh, <laughs> the video cut out halfway through maybe whatever Daniel's feel was about um, intermittent fasting and you know the windows and whatnot. I mean obviously, you know, like what Daniel said earlier. Um, it's quite normal to, to you know, not necessarily stick to your windows as strictly as you should. That's right. And uh, I, I think you know, like what Daniel said. You know, again, what's really important for us to remember as well is that it's all about sustainability, right? It's all about um, knowing that what you're doing right now. So whether it's intermittent fasting or for IF or what you know if you're gonna go keto you're gonna go whatever it has to be sustainable this has to be something <laughs> I'm just realizing it might be picking up the sound of the water running in the background <laughs> oh. <laughs> no that's all right <laughs> so the lovely wife is doing some dishes and we're in this nice open space uh, living area where uh, the mic's great, but it tends to pick up sound from behind the mic as well, even though it's cardioid, <laughs> supposedly. Um, but you know, like you know, like you said, Daniel. Um, I think what's really important is that it's all about the sustainability. It's all about being able to, again, do this rather than just for the next two weeks or three weeks or four months. It's about um, the next years or however long you're going to be doing this mm. for. You know, life doesn't end after IF ends, right? Right, you ready for the last one? Lucky last. Okay, Fry, go for it. Give us them OG. All right. Mm. And I think what I've always really appreciated about KFC anyway, okay, so in New Zealand, um, and I believe this is only a New Zealand thing, <laughs> is to have um, Wicked Wings, right? Wicked so Wicked Wings are um, New Zealand's KFC's answer to a spicy chicken wing. Um, it's not too spicy, it still has that lavender herbs and spices. It tastes very different from the regular original um, KFC. Interestingly enough, we don't actually know what's the difference here. Why have they added on extra? But um, yeah, good god, it's amazing. Mm. Alright, yep, there you go. 
Jo. Hmm. Det skal jeg se. Mm. I think that's something I've always really appreciated about KFC. Like, well, with most places, with uh, with you know the strum, it's usually good. Yeah. Right. You can't go too far wrong if you decide to have a feed and you want chicken and you go with KFC. You can't go too far wrong. Mm. I mean, obviously there are people who have been you know eating enough chicken. I've gone to the uh, um, local takeaways and know what's really good. Um, chick- well, you know, they have really good chicken there. No, that's fair enough. But always for us living in Auckland City, we don't necessarily know. And there's a lot of takeaways. There's a lot of places that does chicken. So we kind of decided to go with the kind of more well-known brands and just kind of um, yeah try them out and see what what works. Mm. Yeah, it's good. The only thing with KFC sometimes I feel, in regards to the health of the chicken, I'm pretty sure I've gotten a chicken that's really osteoporotic at one point. Because <laughs> well. the bones are breaking here. <laughs> but, um, but then again, I'm like, you know, I can only speak for that piece of chicken. <laughs> it was an old granny yeah. chicken that got killed. Yeah. <laughs> but you know how sometimes like KFC um, chicken wings turn really small? Yeah. See, like, I, I think killing like baby chickens yeah. <laughs> just, uh, just, just to just make their quota for the day. I don't know. And of course, I think, um, yeah, that you know, we we don't tend to get the original chicken. Mm. Although they do come in thighs and breast and all that, we don't tend to. Um, because in, in New Zealand, I can't speak for other places, but in New Zealand, unfortunately, more often than not, our original thighs and chicken breasts. KFC tend to be soggy for whatever reason it is. Hmm. Yeah. And um, the only way to combat the sogginess is to get a wicked wing. Because um, it takes a bit more breading on, it's a bit more crispy, it's not as soggy, it's not as like whip, I like limp. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. KFC. Well done. Mm. Well, consistent through the years, eh? That should have done. A little consistency, right? But I've gone to other KFC branches and had KFC. And, um, like, it's really crap at those places. <laughs> and you go back to your usual, and, like, the usual is really good again. And you're like, you're supposed to be a franchise. You should be maintaining standards throughout. But I guess in some places they don't. I think the, the nicest thing for me in regards to the intermittent fasting is that it's it's a lifestyle, right? It's like a diet. Um, similarly, um, it, it basically is a diet. It's just one that I can keep up with. Um, the, I'm also in the age group where lots of friends are getting married. The nice thing about intermittent fasting is I have a wedding to go to, you know, reception that starts at 10 you have like a little afternoon lunch slash maybe afternoon tea maybe about one or two and you have a dinner and what's <coughs> nice with my, the way my intermittent fasting works is usually it caters for that time as well but I really enjoy a good big breakfast not all the time but when especially when I'm on a holiday I'm like oh, I just want you know um, some good you know sausages and hash browns you know scrambled eggs oh there's a place we could <laughs> Yes. But, you know, I don't, and, and when that happens, I'm on holiday. You know, I don't eat perfect. Yeah. You know, but I'm relatively consistent. What's nice is over the, what's nice with how my intermittent fasting was, I lost five kilos from October to December. And I had my Christmas break off and I had New Year's off. So I took that bit of time and it, it took me only about a week mm. to put on five kilos back on. <laughs> And that was very, very disappointing when you're watching you shed weight and you're gymming five days a week, you know, and you're maintaining quite a close, vigilant attention on your diet. But what was amazing was two weeks after that, I lost it back again. I lost, I was back to where I was. And just going back to work and back to my routine in regards to eating, back to my routine in regards to gymming, I lost it. And I've just kept 
going. And I think what's nice is that consistent loss, yes, it's not over three weeks, but um, you know, Dr. Ian Smith, in that podcast, he had, he had a good point. He said, people are so focused on the fact that you have to lose, you know, I think he said 20 pounds, or let's go with 10 kilos in you know six weeks. You have been 10 kilos heavier for the last two years. Mm. What makes you think you can lose it in six weeks? Yeah. Um, some people can, not to say they can't. Um, I think, but the thing for me is the consistency is can I keep going with this for the rest of my life? Yeah. Per se. Yeah. Mm. And if things change, things change, but for now, I'm happy to continue with it and keep going. <clears throat> and I think what's really important, especially with, you know, IF anyway, <clears throat> and, um, I take it. I take this out of Tim Ferriss's book. Um, I think it's the Four Hour Body, where he talks about um, the, the slow carb diet. So again, this is a Tim Ferriss creation. He focused on um, c- kind of cutting out all white carbs, white liquids, so no no milk. Um, and he has like you know you eat a lot more veggies, a lot more beans. And uh, for him, it's worked out. For me, I kind of subscribe to that slow carb diet a little bit. I'm cutting out. A lot of grains, if possible, trying to increase vegetables as much as possible. I mean, honestly, another handful of salad leaves never killed anyone. And um, to be honest, it doesn't ever kill anyone, right? <clears throat> Not unless you're this toxic or whatever. That's it. But <clears throat> one thing I really enjoyed about where kind of Tim Ferriss comes from is the fact that he talks about a cheat day, right? And so for me, when I've been intermittent fasting, <clears throat> I'll pick one day a week where I will just go whole hog and eat whatever I want, right? And so when I was uh, working overseas for a while, I would wake up and have a Snickers bar just because I wanted a Snickers bar. Uh, and then you'll walk down the street and you'll see, oh, you know, that that's frying over there or that's cooking over there. You go, oh, hey, I like that. You'll have that. <clears throat> if I had an entire box of um, Nestle, you know, Cocoa Pops, I could. Again, it's my cheat day. I'm allowed to eat whatever I want. And uh, Tim Ferriss talks about how um, you need to spike your metabolism once a week, right? And this is by consuming way more than your normal calories. So basically what happens here is your body goes, oh, um, I need to start burning more or, or burning fast or be more effective because I'm suddenly eating a lot more than my normal calorie requirements, right? Um, but also I want to point out that, you know, you, know, you talked about that weight gain of five kilos and you know, lift your week, right? Um, again, it's quite common because obviously when you eat grains, uh, when you eat carbs, a lot of carbs, uh, you know, not the great ones anyway, um, you, you start packing on water, right? So one gram of water holds four, um, one gram of carb holds four grams of water. So you eat 200 grams of rice, let's say white plain cooked rice, um, you're holding up to 800 grams of water alone, and that can make you gain a kilo, right? So these gains aren't necessarily permanent, obviously. So if it's just water loss, so again, it doesn't take you much to get back to your regular routine of, you know, IFing and gymming and, you know, the five kilos just came off and you continue losing weight. Obviously, because that's just purely water, you're holding on to that because, you know, it's the holiday period, you're having Christmas cake. Uh, you know, especially when we go back to our parents, we have a lot of um, teas with milk and sugar, quite commonly. And um, you're, you're just adding on all those extras, but, um, What's important is that whatever you're subscribed to, IF, Zone, Keto, Paleo, again, whatever, it needs to be something that's sustainable for you lifestyle-wise and that you can continue doing for the rest of the, you know, the, the foreseeable future anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, yeah, I think of um, yeah, uh, the fact that, you know, we talk about, is it partly water weight that we're adding on? Part of the other reasons, you know, if you're on like say a keto diet, you know, one thing you notice, um, I, I, I attempted that as well at one point, but one of the things I noticed is I peed a lot because <laughs> water needs to go somewhere, and especially things like protein and high fat, it's hydrophobic, so it doesn't like water. So you eject it out of your system, you know, um, you're also really thirsty. Most of the things you're eating, no sugar, <laughs> you know, you a lot of salt. Mm. Not a lot of salt, but more salt than you know your usual because you have no more carbohydrate to add to it. Everything else is salty. Um, but I think you know, like Dr. Ian Smith talks about coupling intermittent fasting with clean eating, and how he describes a clean food is if you grab a packaging and it's got more than seven ingredients on the on the back of it, it's highly unlikely it's clean. 
or things that basically don't doesn't look like how it came out of the ground. Um, you know, and I think that there are days where I, you know, if I'll say last week, you know, um, I wanted some crisp and I bought a bag of crisps. I don't need the whole bag. You know, I had a little bowl of it and I had it with my dinner at seven o'clock before 7.30 because my cutoff window is typically 7.30 at night. Um, my fasting window starts at 7.30 at night. So of course, I'm not one for dessert anyway. We're not ones to eat desserts normally. Mm, yeah, not us. We're quite similar. Um, in that regards, we don't tend to eat dessert. So 7.30 onwards, we don't eat, I don't eat. And usually my next meal will be about 12.30 or one, 12.30 or one o'clock the next day. And in regards to work, sometimes it gets a little bit busy. Next thing I know, I'm only having it at three and it actually works out all right for me. But if I have it at three and I'm going to the gym and lifting heavy that day, I've actually only had about four hours or three hours of a fasting window from my last meal, so I still have the extra energy. Whereas if I don't, I'll probably go home, have a banana, you know, put some peanut butter on top of it before going to the gym just to get a little bit of extra calories. Mm. But overall, you know, trying to, I think the, in, the including intermittent fasting and clean eating really helps. But the one biggest thing I found is when I started intermittent fasting is I've gone from basically three, four meals a day to now two meals a day if I wanted, you know, Anything else in between, I need to get it. Um, but the biggest thing I found was because you're only having two meals a day, you're really conscious of what you eat, and you want the food to be good <laughs> because mm. you're only having two two meals a day. Um, yeah, mm. you know, we, we grew up, you know, with you know the the per se cheat days or the days where you know we might do well at school, and mom's like, oh, you know, well done. Your, your reward is let's go get KFC or let's go get McDonald's. <laughs> mm. So because of that, it's always associated with a very happy emotion. So, you know, sometimes mom's like, oh, you know, you've had a really hard, rough day at work today. Why don't I just go and get KFC? You know, and KFC is still one of those things that I'm like, oh man, sometimes I do feel like it. But with intermittent fasting, I go, yeah, I want something with good nutrients in it. Because I'm only having two meals a day. And, the, and I want my last meal of the day to be, you know, maybe with vegetables. So I'll maybe I'll go get some mint and make a spaghetti bolognese instead, you know, with good vegetables in it. In my spaghetti spag bowl, it doesn't look like spag bowl anymore by the end of it. But yeah, you, know, you want it to be good, nutritious food. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and I think this is also really key as well is that yeah, sure you can you know have a cheat day and eat all this, but um, <clears throat> it's also about the nutrients in the food. So that's where like sometimes what what like the wife and I will go out and have a cheat day, right? So we might you know have. Um, let's say KFC but I always make sure that I, I grab a tub of coleslaw as well just because I, I want some veggies in me um, sometimes I'll come home and have a little salad just because I want that additional um, that additional you know, nutrients right and again a cheat day doesn't necessarily mean um, fried food for example or you know takeaways or whatever um, just give you a really good example um, the other day we had um, we were we wanted, we wanted to have a cheat meal and uh, we, we didn't want to buy fried food, so what we actually got was we went we to buy a leg of lamb um, that was deboned. And then um, we roasted it, had it with a sweet potato mash with um, you know steamed veggies. And it was a really, really wholesome meal. Really, really good, really decent meal. We both really enjoyed it. And I think that just goes to show that you know it doesn't have to be a fried or deep fried or, food. or unhealthy. You can, you can actually have a pretty decent meal and that could still be considered a cheat meal. So again, you know, like what you said about um, making sure that your meal is good. And, you know, especially from where Daniel's coming from, if you're having two meals a day, of course you want your meal to be good, right? But I think for me, because I eat anything from, you know, four to five meals a day, and my meals don't necessarily have to be that on point, like Daniel's, because I'm eating four to five meals a day. So I could technically have a bit of a crap meal for this one and then I know that I can tidy that up by having a really healthy meal next. I can have a salad for dinner for example. But again this is where as you can tell we're two very different people. We play very differently with our diets and we go really differently with our diets as well. So obviously for Daniel he's a lot more conscious. He goes two meals a day. It's got to be amazing meals I've got to have. For me I go I go four or five meals a day. One meal could technically be a protein shake and also consider a meal. And that's okay because, call that a snack even, that's okay, it doesn't matter because I know that I'm gonna be having something better after that anyway. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Right. I'm very full. I'm very full. I'm very, very full. Mm. Um, oh, excuse me. 
All right, and um, I think we'll be eating fried chicken for the next three days. This one looks like not too bad actually. We've done a really good job at it. Yeah, but um, yeah, they're, they're still okay, like. So, so if we were to rate <coughs> the chicken. <laughs> oh yeah. Ho ho ho. Um. You go. You go. <laughs> no pressure. Okay. So let's go with number one first. Okay. So my number one. Funnily, well, I won't say funnily enough, but my number one would be sensational. Okay, what, what's yours? Mm. Ooh, that's put me in a tough spot. Because initially, my thought of number one was actually number one chicken. Oh yeah, but at the same time, is this weird that I like that the fact that there was like bone with the chicken you're having, the sensational? Yeah, it feels like you're actually eating like substance. Not to say that eating chicken with no bone is no substance. To be fair, there, there is an option for bone or without bone and we just decide to go with the bone. I like boneless chicken. I mean, I a regular staple is chicken breast anyway, so I go yeah. on. Yeah, but um, yeah, it just felt like you were like, you know, if you've gone out and had like chicken wings, you feel like you're having chicken wings. And as delicious as these were, um, as this is, I'll, actually I'll probably say this was my favorite out of the lot. Both um, the seasonal, and I think it's the one I've eaten the most of actually oh, yeah. tonight. So that's why I, I say that it is, because I just kept going for it. Yeah, that's my number one. Okay. I'll, I'll go with number one chicken. Yeah. Um, Don't my, my, my favorite would be sensational purely because, number one, it is crispy. Number two, it is salty enough. Number three, it's not too oily, um, and it, it, to be honest, I'd even say, you know how we talked about KFC being like OG, right? And always having a consistent flavor? Every single time I've had sensational chicken, it's always tasted like that. It's never tasted anything else but like that. So mm, that's, that's my good. number one. Right. Yeah. What's your number two? Sensational chicken. Okay. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. It was a close number one. Thank yeah. you, Sensation. Why um, number two? Why, why, why does Sensation say number two in your box? So, uh, well, I was really tossing up between number one and number two for Sensation and number one. Yeah. Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Sensational chicken is chicken wings. Like, you know, good, wholesome chicken wings. Um, and it was crispy, it was, it was tasty, um, it was just good. Um, yeah, but not as good as number one though. Number one, not as good as number one chicken. I think the flavoring of the batter from number one was what probably what made me, like you know how I was describing a childhood memory that was really good, I was like it tastes like the mommy noodles we used to have, it's not one you can have all the time. Yeah. Um, because it's bad for you, because it's just pure carbs in a, in a, in a packaging. Yeah. that's been preserved for whoever knows how long, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's been sitting on the shelf. Um, so it's not like one of those things that, like the, the seasoned version, which of course from a Korean um, chicken, tastes like Korean fried chicken. And mm. since I was introduced to Korean fried chicken about three years ago, I've absolutely loved it. So number one chicken came first, and Sensational probably comes a very close second. Alright, alright. Um, what's your number three? Oh, well, I have to apologize for the OG, but I think Texas chicken is number three. Oh! <laughs> you thrown. <laughs> Why? Oh, it's just. I, I really enjoyed the batter. It was quite salty, it was, you know. Um, although I'm not sure whether we're calling. And what I'm calling KFC number four, hence Texas becomes number three because we bought this over probably about half an hour ago now. But then again, we bought um, since, uh, Texas first and KFC second. Yep. second. And, sec and KFC was actually, the Wicked Wing was starting to get soggy already and Texas actually still maintained their crisp. Okay, not fair enough. Um, my second, Oh, it's actually gonna go with um, no. Actually, my second. Oh, oh, change your mind here. You know what? My second, I will go with Texas. Why is that? Well, 
Well, because um, better, it's good, crispy, um, and, and it stay crispy. I mean, but I mean, then again, Loha has been fried to death, right? So like, um, but it's not too oily either, which is really nice. Um, it also a little bit spicy, so again, that, the spicy chicken um, give it a little bit more taste as well. Third, I want to go with KFC. Ooh! And I will go with KFC because it oh. is OG. Still enjoy the flavors. Just take that run off of the screen with you. And number four will be number one chicken. Um, just because, I mean, and again, it's probably not even the chicken itself. Like, I've had so much fried chicken right now. <laughs> that last piece of uh, seasoned um, chicken, I feel really sick. <laughs> so, and you know, you know how you have those like meal burps, oh. and, 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 the, and the taste of the last thing the burp came up. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah. Um, so that, that's gonna sit in number four for now. Um, give me oh three months. <laughs> I might try this again, <laughs> and then uh, I might I might change my mind. But apart from that, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I'd like to just again say, state for the record that we have not been sponsored by either Texas Chicken, KFC, Sensational Chicken, or Number One Chicken. We bought this with our own money and had a blast of a time frying all of them, but we just feel really, uh, well, I feel really sick right now. I'm not sure how Daniel feels. Um, but, but yeah. <laughs> if you want to sponsor us, though. <laughs> if you want to sponsor us, we ain't going to say no. But it's probably gonna need to be a cheat day kind of thing before we'll actually do anything. <laughs> um, so anyway guys, if you like this video, um, hit that like button, subscribe, um, check out Daniel's, check, uh, Daniel's channel, check out my channel, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Go there. <laughs>